Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna create the protective face shield from Prusa Research. Shout out to Prusa for creating this design and open sourcing it. We're gonna take the design and basically remake it in Fusion 360 and take a look at how we can create it so that it's parametric, so that we can use user parameters, so we can adjust some things like the thickness, the height, and maybe even uh, the curvature of the overall mask. So definitely check it out. Um, we have this uh, in the link in the description of this video. We're gonna work on version, uh, the RC1 version. Um, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. And this is just a great insight into how to use Fusion tool, the tools inside of Fusion 360 uh, to make uh, a similar design. So what I'll do is um, I'll show you guys that we've already recreated it and we've already done a test print. It actually fits very well and it also works with uh, the template that Prusa has provided for cutting out a sheet of PETG. Um, so uh, you can do that. You can create the actual uh, clear plastic bit um, using a sheet of PETG. So let's go ahead and create a new design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import, uh, I'm going to go down to the insert menu, insert mesh, and I'm just going to select uh, RC1. And we're going to use the RC1 STL um, just for the curves because Prusa has already done the work in figuring out the right curves so that it's going to fit uh, the majority of folks' head. Um, so that's why I am kind of referencing that design. And uh, we'll be able to kind of reuse their template as well uh, for cutting out that uh, PETG uh, material. So here it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new component. Let's go ahead and call this RC1. Hit OK. Um, the first thing I'll do is uh, create a sketch. I'll create it on the floor plane here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a line that's going to go from the center uh, to the top here, just to kind of give us an idea of um, how far this needs to be. So that looks good. And then I'll add a dimension to that. Let's say 66. Looks good. Not too bad. And then I'll um, select that and just hit X on my keyboard so that it's a dashed line. So now it's a construction line. That way it doesn't cut anything that we want. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to create some curves. And to create curves inside of Fusion, it's uh, the spline tool. Um, they've renamed it to Fit Point Spline. So that's the one we want to use. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll start from the top here where that first dot is. So I'll go right there and we'll go somewhere down here and then maybe finish it off about right there. We have to hit this green checkbox in order to append those. And right away, you'll see those green handles were automatically created. I'll hit escape on my keyboard and uh, you can start dragging these handles. What I want to do is you can actually apply some constraints to the handles themselves. So with that handle selected, I want to make it, I want to straighten it out so that it's nice and flat. So I'll select the horizontal vertical constraint and then I'll also do that to the side here as well. So I'll just click on that and that smooths it out for me. So now with that, um, I can start applying some dimensions to some of the other things like uh, this dot here, for example. So I'll say I want a dimension from this point to the center point going straight across like that. We'll say uh, 56 is probably a good number. 57 looked okay too though. Okay, that looks good. And then uh, from this point to the center point going out this way, going up and down instead of across, um, let's say 12 or so is looking okay. All right. And then what I want to do is it looks like it's a straight line that goes from here to here. So I'll just go ahead and grab my line tool with the hotkey L, where you can just search for it in the search toolbox. And I'll start it from this point here and then just go away somewhere like down there and hit okay for that. Now there's a bit of a, between this one and between that curve and this line, I wanna make it super smooth. And the way to do that is to apply a tangent constraint. So once I do that, you'll see that it, it nicely follows down and, and gets really nice and curvy with that. So that's looking good. Next thing I wanna do is apply a length, a dimension to this edge itself. So I'm gonna start pulling that out. And let's go ahead and say it's 44. Hit OK. Looks good. And then what I want to do is create uh, some more dimensions from this point that connects those two lines. And then again, we'll use our center point as a way to, uh, to establish a, a, a distance. Looks like 40. We'll round that off to 40. And then from here to here, going out this ways, we'll say 31. That looks pretty good. All right. So that's our first line. Um, we could also start doing uh, dimensions to the Bezier curves, the handles themselves. So with it selected, hit D on my keyboard and pull out a dimension. Looks like uh, I can give this a dimension of like 26 to round that out. And then we'll do that to the top here as well. Dimension, 
let's say 32 and just kind of smooth that out a little bit or just to round off those edges. So I can see this looking pretty good. All right. Another thing we want to do is um, probably apply a, um, a, a degree, an angle of degree to this line here. I want it to be perfect. So I'm going to grab the line tool and I need some sort of way to kind of reference. Um, to, I just need a line really. So I'll, I'll start from the center and go out this way going on the X axis. It doesn't matter how long it is really because we're just using it to create this degree. So I'll select this, hit D on my keyboard, and then I'll select this. And now you can see that degree is starting to show up there. You can see it's like 45.999, whatever. I'm going to smooth that down to let's say 44. Hit OK. Actually, let's increase that by 2, so 46. And you can see here that it's pretty much following the preset design pretty closely. So I think that's OK. I think it's working out pretty well. So now that that's done, go ahead and hit X. I'll make that a construction line, hit X, whatever. Doesn't matter how long it is, right? So with that, now I can start creating the second band here, the inner band here. And it seems to like come in and then it kind of connects back into this, uh, this, this line here. So again, I'll bring up my model sketch toolbox and then I'll type in spline. There's our, our fit point spline. We'll uh, scroll in here and then I'll just kind of draw right on this line, somewhere like right there. Come in here, let's say right there. And then for my last one, I'm going to come in a little bit closer here, somewhere around this, make sure that uh, I'm like writing on that line. And then again, I have to hit that check box to complete it and append it. And you can see it's all crazy looking. So we'll grab these curves. Let's go ahead and smooth that out with the horizontal constraint. And we'll also do that here on this side horizontal constraint. Excellent. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and start applying some dimensions. So from this dot to the center origin, let's say 52, just rounding that off. And then uh, this dot from here to here going across, that's looking like it's 50. And then from here to here going up and down ways, five looks okay. Actually, let's bring it down to like maybe two. That looks better. And okay, so then it looks like this line here and this straight line, let's add a tangent, smooths it out. And then if you start following it, it looks like it's pretty spot on with the, uh, the Prusa STL. Um, if we really want to, we can go ahead and apply some dimensions here to those Bezian curves. Looks like 28, it's already rounded. This one on the side, maybe 25. And now that's rounded and nice and even. So it's looking pretty good. I think that's all we need to do there. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll hit stop sketch. Let's go ahead and hide the body. Now that we have that, we can start extruding this out. Now, although it is not like an entity, uh, we can use the surface tools to extrude out a line. That's gonna create a surface. And then we can thicken that surface to get the headband. So. Um, now that I'm in here, I can just hit uh, extrude. But before I do, I want to start creating those user parameters. So instead of typing 20 or 10, we can type in the word height. And um, I'll create that by bringing up my, uh, my parameters, my user parameters window. It's normally under um, assemble, I believe. It's somewhere, I forget where, oh, there it is. It's under modify and then change parameters. I have it as a hotkey U. I think I set that up customly. So anyway, we'll create one with the little plus sign. Let's call it the band, the band height. And then I'll make it, uh, I think it's 20, hit enter. And I'll also do the band thickness. So band thickness will be a millimeter and a half. So we'll be able to change that if we want later. Let's hit okay. All right, now that I have those two user parameters set up, I will start extruding. I gotta make sure that I'm in the surface command, otherwise you can't extrude up a single line. So I'll, so I'll select these two, this one and this one. Now instead of adding a, um, a number, I'm gonna type in height, and then band height shows up. I'll hit enter and append it like that. Sweet, so now we only have half of it, by the way. We've only created half, so we're just gonna use a mirror uh, to create uh, the other half of this. So uh, I'll bring up my design shortcuts, mirror and then I'll select uh, these two guys and then uh, my mirror plane will be this guy here and you can see a little preview here with the green um, the green surfaces I'll hit enter and those are our uh, our headband now
we can again bring out our STL to make sure that everything looks good. There's zero thickness to this surface. It's just a surface. So now let's go ahead and add some thickness to it. All right. Um, let me double check here. What did our bodies look like? So as you can see, we have all these surfaces and one of the things we should probably do is stitch them together. So I'll, I'll right under here under the modify, we're still inside the surface tab. I'm gonna hit stitch and I'll stitch this to that. And you see that little green line there that lets us know that's where it's stitching it. So I'll hit okay. And then that uh, creates it into a single surface there. So we'll do it again, stitch. Oh boy, click on surface, stitch. So like this one and this one, you get that green line, lets us know where it is, hit okay. So now we have those two, that's what we want. Okay, now with that, um, I'll bring up my uh, shortcuts and type in thick. You can see we have two thickens, one's for surface and one's for, or one's for, I forget which one, but you want this one here, this one that has this icon. So I'll select that, I'll select this, and then um, this, see you can't select it for some strange reason. So I'll hit X, select that, and then that. Okay, now they're both selected. I guess the order matters how you select it. And then I can start pulling this air out to get an idea of where the thickness is coming from. Um, by the way, you wanna make sure direction set to symmetric. Otherwise, if it's set to one-sided, you can start seeing what it's doing. It never connects because it's going out one side. So we want this to be symmetric. And because it's symmetric, um, we want to we want to kind of take our thickness value and divide it into two. So divide it in half. So thickness divided by two will give us uh, that 1.5. So it's really doing 0.75 on the outside and on the inside, and that's really it. So uh, the new operation set to join a uh, new body that will create us a new body. So I'll hit OK. And you notice that Fusion keeps those surfaces as a reference point, but hides them and then gives us a new body, and that's what we're working with. All right. So now if we come in here, bring up our user parameters, and we can make this uh, three, we can make this two, and it's all nice and adjusting how we want it. So okay, I'll put it back to 1.5, hit okay, and then start kind of rounding out some of these uh, some of these features. So these edges right here are really, really sharp, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply a chamfer to them. So I'll just select those guys there, and let's apply a fairly large four millimeter chamfer, hit okay. Now we can use the fillet tool, the hockey's F on my keyboard, and then uh, I'll select these really sharp corners here. And if I give it a one millimeter fillet, you'll see that that made it jump all the way up here. And that kind of creates, it smooths out um, the tool path when we're printing it, and it just creates a stronger joint. Um, so definitely add those there, hit okay. Now if you reference our Prusa um, STL, you can see that's looking pretty similar there. A little bit off, but I think it's pretty close. All right, so now that we have that, really the last things to do is those nubs. You can see here in the design here, there's this nub here on, on both ends there, and those are for elastic bands or rubber bands or whatever as a, as a way to strap it so it stays on your head. It's really important to have those. So I'll go ahead and hide the body and start drawing a new sketch here. I'm gonna go back to solid because we don't need the splines or services anymore. So I'll create a new sketch and do it on the bottom here. Um, it's gonna be a mirrored thing, so I'm just gonna do it on one side and then just mirror everything to the other side. Since I want it to be uh, right up against this surface, I can just grab one of these edges from that surface and project that in using the uh, hotkey P for project. Hit okay, and now I have that purple line there that I can use as reference. So what I'll do is I'll grab my line tool and start drawing out um, some rectangles like that. And what I'll do is I will select this line and this line, and I need them to be perpendicular with each other. So I got that constraint, perpendicular. And then also what I wanna do is start kind of making these corners square and true by using a perpendicular. So I'll say I want this and this to be perpendicular, this and this to be perpendicular, and I can even do this and this to be perpendicular. And that way it's all nice and true. Now what I want to do is I want to connect this line with this projected edge. I'll use the collinear constraint. And I'll bring that there like that. Now what I want to do is I want to start applying some dimensions. So let's say I want some certain distance away from those two. Let's say two. And then I want this to be a certain length. Let's say 23. And then this length over here, let's say four. And instead of 23, I probably meant to do eight. Haha. <laughs> All right. Then I need to create another set of uh, lines to create another sort of rectangle. 
So something like this. All right, so what I want to do now is say I want this and this to be parallel, but this time I want this and this to be a midpoint. So to connect those two and then center those lines out. So it'll always be in the center. Next, I want to apply um, some perpendicular constraints to those corners so that I know that they're nice and true. Looks like from here to here, maybe that one doesn't need it. Nope, doesn't need it too many. All right. So now as you see, if I start pulling these edges in, it's nice and centered with that um, kind of bridge area there. Now I want to add a dimension to this, let's say 23. And then over here, this will be, I think it was five. Yeah. And that's really all we need to do there. That's our nub. I'll hit stop sketch, and then I can start extruding these two rectangles. I'm going to go up, something like that. Now we don't want to start it from the bottom. We actually want to start a little bit away from the bottom. So to do that, we can sit start, change profile plane to offset plane, and I'll just add a number two here. And then our distance, let's go ahead and make this 13 and hit OK. Now, because we have this giant overhang now, we won't be able to print that. So what we want to do is we want to make this a 45 degree draft. So I'll bring out my draft tool and select this surface as the plane and then this surface as the face. Um, Fusion remembered my value from last time, but if it wasn't, you would just either enter it in or play with this kind of handler here, 45, hit OK. Okay, now that that's set up, I can start rounding off these edges a little bit. But before I do, you're gonna notice that there is this overhang here, this sort of T-shape, these lines here, awful for printing. So what we need to do is we need to cut them off and add a bit of a chamfer or something here so that this is all going up 45 degrees. So the best way I found to do so is to just grab one of these surfaces and then create a surface, uh, create a sketch right onto that surface. So what I'll do is I'll sneak in here and grab these bottom edges and project them into that sketch. So that one and that one. So you see two, hit OK. And now we have those two purple edges. A little bit hard to see, but really all I need to do is hide the body. And then I need to create this, um, this sort of wedge here. So something like something that goes like from here, out, down, and then connects this to close that off. All right. I got an automatic uh, parallel uh, constraint, which is pretty good actually but I do need to create a, uh, a, a specific degree from here to here. It's gonna be 45. All right, and then this right here, let's go ahead and make that 12, why not? Now I could just mirror this set of stuff, but I need something to mirror. I need some. I need a line or something. So since these two are um, really relative to each other, I'll just connect that line there, find my midpoint, go up, make sure that it's uh, nice and straight. And then I can just double click. Well, let me click on this, deselect that, and then uh, hit mirror, mirror the sketch here, these three lines with this center line here, and then that's it. Nice. So now I can grab those triangles, really, and then start extruding them out. Let's bring back body, and then you can see what it's cutting away. So it's cutting away at those, uh, at that T-shape so that it's way better for printing. So now that I have that, um, I can smooth out this stuff, right? So I'm gonna bring out the fillet tool. I'm gonna fill it, I'm gonna round out these edges here. Now, this line here is about five millimeters, so five divided by two, 2.5. You see here I got that nice, smooth, rounded angle there, and I'll do it on the other side as well. 2.5, 2.5, and there you go. I'll create a new set, a new selection, using that plus button. And I'll select these edges here. The distance between this and this are about four, so divide that by two, it's two. So I'll select these other sides there, and now you can see I'm rounding everything out there. There's a little bit of, a, of, an, of an edge here, but that's fine, it resolves fine when you print it. And the last thing I'll do here for this nub is apply a chamfer to this top edge there of a one millimeter. That way it, it rounds it out a little bit. So now that I have that whole set there, I can start mirroring this nub so I'll bring out my mirror. I'll make sure the pattern type set to uh, the pattern type set to features, and then I'll select starting from this one over here, our draft, another extrude, another fillet, and our chamfer. And then the mirror plane will be this guy here. There we go. So now that's added it to the single body. So we just have one body. It's looking good. And if we reference our Prusa STL, you can see here that's pretty close. And it uh, looks like all we need now is those four nubs that go 
across the outside band here. Cool, so with that component still selected, I'll create a new sketch, again, drawing on the floor plane. Let's start out with this one at the top here. Because it's, um, you know, everything's symmetric, I'm just gonna draw this one and this one and then mirror those two nubs. And hopefully that'll work out well. So uh, for this, I could just use a regular rectangle, something like that. Let's give this a dimension of five by 12. I'll go ahead and um, create a line that connects these two together, make it a construction line, and I can move this around. I think I want to do this line, the center line, to the center origin. Let's say 28.6. And then from this tip to the center point, let's do 68. And then we'll just reduce it down to like 66.8. 66.6, <laughs> that's looking pretty good. Maybe we can do 66.5. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay, now I can grab my, um, I can pull out this edge here from the actual surface, or really from the solid. Project that in, hit enter. And now I have that purple line, so now that'll create a, a kind of cut so that I can just select this piece as opposed to selecting the whole thing. That's good. Okay, I'll bring back the STL so I can get an idea of how this corner is over here at the side. This one's a little special. It has um, a specific uh, angle to it. So I will have to use my line tool to kind of draw it out. Something like that. Let's go ahead and do some perpendicular stuff. Here and here should also be perpendicular. Hopefully that doesn't break anything. That's always fun. I think that's it. That's it right there. Okay. Then I'll create another line that'll connect this to this. Construction line. And then I can start applying those dimensions. What was it? 12 by 5, I believe. That's a that's probably not a good dimension it needs to be a diagonal you can see how it changes as you move your cursor so I'll make that right there say five all right now I do need to create a line right here from the center point going out doesn't matter how long it is just the line so that I can say I want this and this to have a degree of uh, one I think it was 120 yeah 120 looks good and then from here to here what is it like four, three, three's looking good. And then from here to here, 52. Now let's do 53, 53 is all right. No, that's not too bad. I think that's okay. Um, 120, maybe 121, 119. Trying to get it perfect with Bruce's um, thing here, but that's looking pretty good. I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be okay. So I had finished sketch. Now what I want to do is uh, grab those, those little nubs, just those outside bits. And uh, I think they're about uh, six millimeters tall. Hit enter. And then we need to round them off. So from here to here with a fillet, well, uh, it's 2.5. Yep, 2.5, and we'll grab these guys over here, 2.5 as well. One last thing to do is apply a, a chamfer to the top and bottom of those, one millimeter, right here and right here. Hit OK. Cool, and then I'll go ahead and hide the STL. And then we can do the mirror. We're going to mirror those three, the extrude, the fillet, and the chamfer, and then our mirror plane will be this guy here. Hit Enter. And that is looking pretty good. Hey, that's that's looking really good. Now, one thing to note, the Prusa one has these holes that are high, uh, hexagons that are going across here. And I found that that creates a little bit of a issue with retraction. If your printer doesn't have really good active cooling, that could start to curl up and actually hit the tool head of your printer and create some bad geometry. So without that, those holes, you're only gaining about two minutes extra of printing and that's not bad at all you really want a good quality print so I'm going to just skip those um, holes for now but uh, if you did wanted to do that 
you can see here how it's done. It's basically just another sketch that punches a hole and then I use uh, a pattern on path and then uh, I mirror that and then that's how you create it. So this right here, this is the feature that makes it work. Um, it's called the um, the pa uh, pattern on path, something like that. What is this called? Path pattern. So you can just type in path, pattern, pattern on path. You select that and then you can select this guy here and then you would select this extrude as, uh, as your feature to, uh, to patternize and then you can uh, you have these options here quantity distance distance type set the spacing and then you want your operation to be um, path direction otherwise um, they won't follow the direction of your path so that's one cool thing it looks really cool but again um, it actually creates some surface quality that is not desirable so uh, we skipped that there. But uh, hey, it's fully parametric. You can come in here and add thickness to it. Let's see if I can add thickness to it without breaking it. I'll say three. And that happened just fine. Let's do two. That's happening just fine as well. And we'll go back to one and a half. And that's working just fine. We could, of course, make it taller, go 30, or maybe even go 15, make it a little bit thinner or less tall. Go back to 20. And you can see there that the nub there might need some, some work there if you're going too low. But other than that, that's feeling pretty good. So that is how you can use the tools in Fusion 360 uh, to create your own customized uh, face shield. Again, big shout outs to the Prusa team for coming out with their designs. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys can uh, use uh, this tutorial as a resource. Let me, go, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget we have a playlist for lots of other layer by layer tutorials. But until next time, remember to uh, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, folks.